Pages are essentially the ability to program up to 60 physical buttons and tell those buttons what to do. So I'm going to go ahead and select, just to give you an example, so I'm on the Pages menu. I'm going to so the first thing we could do is scroll up and down and select the preset. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, this, pre uh, this page, which has six presets. Uh, on the bottom row it's 1, 2, 3, and then if you hold it it's 4, 5, and 6, I'll show you that. And then 12 IA switches. So again, it's 1, 2, 3. If I hold it, and then as soon as I let go, that would be preset 4. Hold it, let go is 5. Hold it, let go is 6. And same with IA switches. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Hold it, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and so on. That's how I have it programmed anyway, as you'll see. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, select this page to edit. That's in songs and set lists and IA switches. You have a name and then you have a nickname that you give it. Status number one color. On the liquid foot there's status one and status two. You can tell it to uh, turn on a color so maybe it'll be some visual for you. So here we have a dim red green, yellow, blue, cyan, purple, white, and then you have bright colors as well. All the same colors, just bright. Uh, next parameter. So the first number is the physical button slot that we're going to program. So I can scroll up and down. So we're going to start with one. As you may recall when I was outside of the, when I was in preset menu, the first button at the bottom was a page down, and the one above it, slot number five, button number five was page up. And you can see here, button number one is a context down. I'll explain that. A context function means that if we're in song mode, it would be it would automatically act like a song up, song down. If it was in preset mode, it'll be a bank up, bank down, uh, and so forth. So a context down makes this a smart smart button and it knows based on what mode you're in what function it should have. And then the second function if we were to hold the switch down and release it uh, we can see that we don't have one there so it's not defined. So button number two the first thing it's going to do if you just press and release it is act like preset button number one so it's going to trigger preset one. And the second function if we were to hold it is for this particular page uh, is set up to trigger a preset uh, B004 um, so it'll trigger preset number four within a bank so that's what button number two does button number three triggers two and five button number four button number five it was this guy right here which you saw as uh, bank up and down that's set up to be a function that's what the F over here uh, function number three is a context up button, and there is no function below it uh, defined. So let's go ahead and go to six. The S means it's an IA switch, uh, switch number zero, slot number one, which is programmed as a compressor. Uh, if we press and hold it, it's going to trigger a another switch, uh, number seven, which is programmed as a drive right now. So it tells you. So here are some IA switches. Number nine, switch number nine is what was the menu key and in a different video I'll show the tuner. And uh, so for, for this particular page I have it set up as a menu. And uh, since we're here, let's go ahead and define number two. Let's make it a function. Okay, uh, actually let's make it a switch. And Let's make it a tuner, which I have slot number 13 for IA switches is programmed as a tuner, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. And uh, so now we're done. So now uh, when I press number 9, it'll be a menu. If I press and hold it and let go, it'll act like a tuner. So what can you store? So you have up to 60 of these, basically. So how does this work? The way, the way we program something, if you, if you were to visualize in, in your mind a button, 
A button can be one of a couple things. It could be nothing, not defined at all, in which case you could press it all day long and it won't do anything. You can program a switch as a preset, and if you were to do that, you just move over and tell it what preset number you want. Now this becomes important because it doesn't mean preset number one. It means within the page, it will trigger based on whatever bank you're in, the first preset in that bank. So in this case, if I had programmed uh, switch number one to be 17, it would think that every bank, uh, when we do a bank up and down, uh, it'll take the highest preset, so in this case 17, so I'll have banks of 17, whether there's a physical button triggered for a certain preset or not, it knows what the highest number is and that becomes the bank size. So we could do uh, presets assigned to a button. Oops. So we have not defined, we can define it as a preset. We could define it as a function key. So let's go over and look at the functions. So I could program a button to be a menu key, an enter select, uh, that'll make more sense in a second. A context up, I talked about that earlier, a context down, a preset up and down. This, this is really neat because I can actually create a page where I have no preset buttons and just a preset up button and then um, it'll scroll. In fact, I'm going to leave this preset up after I, when I come back to it. So yeah, preset up, preset down, bank up, bank down, song up, song down, set list up, set list down, page up, page down, global page, last page, last preset, save preset, and uh, change of modes. So you can program a button slot to be any of these type of functions if you so choose. I was talking about, so I'm going to make this a uh, page up. And in fact, I'll make the second one a uh, preset down. Oops. Okay, preset down. So I'm going to save that. Okay. Now, if we're not doing functions, then we can program a button slot to be an IA switch. And so if we scroll over here, I'm not going to save this, but you can see all the IA switches that I have programmed, and you just kind of pick one that you want. So it gets rid of this idea that a button has to be sequential. We could throw presets anywhere on the screen. Go to button number 10, and we're going to make uh, button number 10 a preset. Oops, preset. And let's go ahead and make it uh, preset number two. Okay, so let's save this and now let's see what we just did. So I'm going to exit out and let's look at some of our changes. So I'm going to zoom out here. So first thing is that we changed switch number 10 to act like a preset button. Uh, in fact, we told it to be preset number two. So if I go ahead and uh, click on that button, it will switch to preset number two. Now you'll notice that the normal presets, the middle one is also preset number two, so you'll notice that it became active, just like that one, because they're acting like the same exact function. And then one and three are now deactivated. So if I go ahead and select number one, number two is now deactivated and up here. So this, the idea is that any button can be any function, any switch, in any order you so choose. Now the other thing we did was changed the bank down button to a preset up and you'll see that the command is pre up with an up arrow and in this case since it's a preset up it's telling us if we go to the next preset so we're on what number we're on number one so it's saying if we hit up we're gonna go to the Alberts preset which is number two you'll see that it's actually armed uh, if you look at that bottom row, pre-Albert lead. That brings us back to some functions I didn't show you. So if I hit it again, it'll take us to another. Uh, and that's crystal. I mean, if I hit it again, now we're on another. And the next preset we're going to go to is melancholy. Okay, and you get the idea. So I can keep scrolling up, putting up. Been up. Now if I hit uh, preset 1 to trigger it, uh, it sent us to the uh, preset that we were trying to go to. Now what would be more interesting is if 
I told it that when I press this button it actually triggers it instead of arming it and what we were doing when I hit it is arming it so that second row says we're armed for east west so let's go ahead and change that button I'm gonna leave it back up here again let's go back to the page okay and I'm going to button number one and you can see this is preset one I mean preset up and I'm gonna scroll past and now I'm on preset down so here I have some functions for this switch it says second button type on hold trigger only so I can have it so that when I press the button it, it does preset up if I press and hold it it will trigger preset down but it, and when I'm in trigger only then what it'll do is just trigger that second function but not change the menu item if I go ahead and change the on hold to toggle one and two then if I press the button and let go it would do a preset up if I press and hold it it'll do a preset down and then the, the screen will now change to a preset down function and now I can just tap it to do preset down if I press and hold it again it'll go back to um, uh, preset up so I'll show that in a later video anyway I'm just gonna leave it on trigger only you'll see why in a second and then the next function is a button release so we can tell it this switch do I wait to trigger some event when I just press the button or when I actually release it so if you like to step on a button and just wait and then when you're ready to go you take your foot off then you could do a, pre a button on press uh, or wait for a release so those are your two functions that you can program there so we have a second button type button release type and then here's where I wanted to go trigger scroll so don't process the scroll event uh, or process scroll so what I'm telling this button is that when I press it I'm gonna do a preset up and you saw in the second line of the LCD it's, it had armed it it said pre colon and then the name of the preset so it had armed it would and the default is don't actually process it just arm it what I'm gonna do is now tell that switch to actually process so I made a change and uh, down here it says hit save to save the change so I did that so let's go ahead and exit out now that I've done that and let's we'll see that we're on east west now if I hit preset up it's going to go to the preset the brown which I think is the brown sound so I'm going to go ahead and press it now and you can see that it armed it and then it automatically triggered it and now it's sitting there and if I hit it again it'll jump to emerald so let's go ahead and do that okay so now the function is a, not just scrolling up or down but it's actually live now if I press and hold it you'll see the tempo light blinking Oops, I held it too long, so now I'm going to save copy. Uh, so I'm going to press and hold it, and now you can see that I'm going down because I programmed the second function as a preset down. So I'm going down, and if I press it quickly, then it goes up. So you get the idea. So in essence, any button can have up to two functions with a lot of flexibility on how those functions behave. Let me show a toggle real quick and let's go ahead and change the button type to toggle uh, toggle A and B. So now when I press the button it acts like a page up. If I press and hold it and then let go now it becomes a page down button and you'll see it going page down and if I press it and hold it for two seconds it's back to a page up button so you can have multiple features and functions on any particular switch and it allows you to put any button anywhere so if you don't want your bank up and down on this side maybe you want it up here maybe you want your presets in some crazy order uh, up and down <laughs> instead of across uh, just about anything you can think of you can get two functions on every switch you have up to 60 switches and um, and that's per page then you can program up to 50 different page layouts and uh, trigger those pages at a preset level or an IA switch level or even a button level. So that's how pages work.